All right. <clears throat> one of the one of the overlooked but most simple concepts about trigonometric functions is understanding input and output. And this is something that you know I have mentioned multiple times, but I'm gonna put it down one more time here. You know, when you take a trigonometric function, you have inputs and you have outputs, right? So the input to any trigonometric function, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, okay? This is always an angle, okay? So an angle value. Now, this angle could be in degrees or it could be in radians. We don't know. But the angle is going inside that trigonometric function. So whatever comes in here, that's an angle. The output can be one of two things. There's two ways to really interpret this, right? So one way to interpret it, if we're specifically talking about sine, and that's what we'll do here with, with this slide, if we're specifically talking about sine, when you take the sine of an angle, okay, one way to evaluate that is to find the y coordinate on the unit circle. Okay, now at this point, you should have a very deep knowledge of the unit circle, and you should understand that that there are limitations to it, right? There are limitations to using this as the tool for doing our trigonometry. If you look around the unit circle, the y coordinates that we see on the unit circle, okay, are zero, plus or minus one half, plus or minus radical two over two, plus or minus radical three over two, and plus or minus, sorry, I ran out of room, plus or minus one. These are the only Y coordinates that we see on the unit circle. Okay. Keep that in the back of your mind with what we're going to be talking about next. If you don't, if you're trying to do the sign of an angle, and again, what angles are we talking about on the unit circle? Any variation of pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, right? Any values of pi, like integer with integer coefficients. Okay. Anything outside of that. Like, what's the sine of 7 pi over 12? Okay, we've got our work cut out for us on that. So we have this secondary, and I guess it's really the primary method for doing trigonometric functions, and that is using SOHCAHTOA. Specifically related to sine, if you're asked to find the sine of an angle, you could do an opposite over hypotenuse ratio of sides in a right triangle. Okay. So it's really two different tools, SOHCAHTOA, more specifically here, opposite over hypotenuse ratio, or Y coordinates on the unit circle. That's a, that's, a trig, that's, that's a way to develop an understanding of sine, all right? But this video has an alternative, uh, or ha has, has an additional, should I say, objective, and that is to discuss inverse sine, okay? Now, Inverse sine, also known as arc sine, is a function. So we do have x values that are going to be the inputs, and we do have outputs, right, which we'll call y values for right now. But if arc sine, and again, this is a, just a different way of writing what you traditionally know as inverse sine. Arc sine and inverse sine mean the same thing. They're interchangeable notations, okay? When you talk about an inverse, Right when we when we talked about inverses early on in this unit or early on in this course, we talked about how one way to define an inverse is to look at the x and y values of the function and flip them, and those became the x and y values of the inverse. Right? Okay. But we talked about how the domain becomes the range and the range becomes the domain. So in other words, when you look at the input and output of a sine function. This input, the angle that was an input to sine, is the output for arc sine. So the outputs here are angles. Okay. The inputs are what we talked about up here. So when you're doing an inverse sine function, okay, and this is why, you know, maybe, maybe I, uh, I, well, no, I shouldn't use different uh, variables. I should use independent and dependent variables. But understand that even though I'm writing an x here, 
the number that's going in here is a Y coordinate on the unit circle. Again, with limitations to just those values that we know, or opposite over hypotenuse ratio in a right triangle. And you won't know which one of these you're supposed to do until you see what that output is. Okay, and we'll see that with a bunch of examples here in a second. Uh, one, one little trick that I have come up with, okay, over the years, when you talk about arc sine, okay, and you're going to hear me say this in class, you're going to hear me say this in some videos probably later on. What is an arc? Okay, an arc is a piece of a circle, right? So we've taught that, I mean, the, by definition, we've talked about how when you have when you have a circle, okay, a piece of the circle, why would I choose black to talk about this? Okay, it's already black, right? So this is a piece of the circle defined by this central angle. And the unit circle, the, the, the illustrations that we've seen of the unit circle have all of these arc lengths labeled, right? Labeled in terms of points, and in terms of angles themselves. So, oops, sorry. Ah. So come back to this. So what I came up with is, a, I'm not going to call it a clever way because, you know, that's, I don't want to give myself too much credit, but if an arc is a piece of the circle, okay, and these pieces of the circle all have pi value definitions, when we see arc sine, okay, what I, what I, came up with is, what's an arc? An arc is a pi value. And what? how do we do sine on the unit circle? Okay, that's a y value or a y coordinate. So arc sine of, let's just do a quick example while we're here, right? Arc sine of one half. What pi value has a y value of one half? And this is one of those numbers that we see as a Y value on the unit circle. Okay, so when you see arc sine one half, something you can say as a different interpretation of that is what pi value has a Y value of one half? And then go to the unit circle, oops, go to the unit circle and find that Y value of one half, which would be pi over six. Okay, gosh, I'm going to the wrong screen all over the time, all over the place here. So we would say the pi value with a y value of one half is pi over six. Okay, keep in mind one last thing. Sorry that this video is kind of dragging on here a little bit. Because the domain of sine is infinite in normal cases, but when we want to talk about inverse sine, we have to limit this. Okay, we have to limit this, and that would be the that would be the purpose of what we probably went through in class today, if you're watching this video, we would have discussed how we have to limit the domain of sine if we want to talk about its inverse. So when we're talking about inverse sine in this concept that we're in right now, we have to limit ourselves to the angles from negative pi over two to pi over two. And if this is the domain of sine and this is the range, then for arc sine, the domain is from negative one to one, and the range is from negative pi over two to pi over two. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, evaluating this. We can only use the angles between negative pi over two and pi over two as our outputs. Okay, and we'll do some examples of this as we as we go along.